The Try Guys have tried a lot of medical stuff. Let's see what's been legit and what's been not. The Try Guys, the Try Guys guys, <laughs> try prostate exams? The Try Guys. Guys try prostate exams. Uh, Movember is this thing that helps raise money and awareness for prostate cancer. Movember's a great organization. We're not growing mustaches. We're doing one better. And it involves the finger. But stuff! Today we are gonna get our prostates examined. At least they said finger. I remember watching the first episode of Grey's Anatomy. I'm just gonna insert my fingers into your rectum. Why fingers? I, I... If it takes just one finger up the butt to find out a life or death situation, stick the whole hand up my butt. Wait, what, what did you say? Prostate cancer is the most commonly diagnosed cancer amongst men in the United States. Very important to point out, while it's the most common cancer, it's also the cancer that many men die with not of. So like there's a huge majority of men over the age of 80 who actually have prostate cancer, but end up dying of other causes. So what we've come to realize and how we've changed our management with prostate cancer is, unless it's an aggressive form of prostate cancer or a treatable form of prostate cancer, we do a watchful waiting period where we monitor, but don't actually treat. Because what we've come to realize is treatment and even diagnosis in some cases can be worse than just letting the disease be. It rarely occurs in men under 50, Oh. I don't actively think about being susceptible to cancer. It's not in my family. I'm a young person who can take on the world. Testicular cancer is a cancer that the Try Guys need to worry about. Okay, that was a weird scene, and I don't know if they did that for comedy. A doctor should never be palpating an area without visualizing it. Yes, you might be able to feel masses, but you might miss like a terrible rash. You might uh, press on an area that's very tender. Because testicular cancer is the most common cancer amongst men aged 20 to 40. That's true, and actually testicular cancer has this like weird bimodal distribution where it peaks in younger men, kind of flattens out, and then also peaks in older men as well. The good part about it is it's rare. The second good part about it is quite treatable, even if it's spreads. So we're gonna do the genitourinary exam and examine your testicles to see if there's any abnormality, okay? We're not just checking the testicles. We're checking the epididymis. We're checking the glands. We're checking for rashes. We're checking the pubis. We're checking the pubic hair. The left one feels just fine. Do I need to cough? You don't need to cough. When people say to cough, what we're actually looking at is hernias, which are checked in the same area. And the reason we cough, by the way, is to raise intra-abdominal pressure so that when we are in the inguinal canal, if there is a hernia, we'll feel it poke and hit our, like the intestines or abdominal contents poke our finger while we're in there. Men that are age 25 to 40 have to get their nuts felt and men that are age 50 or older have to get their butts poked. That's basically right. That's not basically right. We actually have moved away. The United States Preventive Service Task Force states that prostate exams are a shared decision-making process between a doctor and a patient, not something that is unequivocally recommended. Eye on your side with your right side down. Bring your knees up a bit to expose your bottom, okay? Bottom exposed. Don't some people bend over? Yeah, that can be done also. You can just stand up and lean over and put your elbows on the table. Has anyone done like missionary style? The doctor had us lay on our sides. Eugene, of course, bent over because he's Eugene. I think it goes deeper when you do doggy style. And he poured a ton of lube on that finger. Actually, when we were med students, we would do this. And I remember the simulated patient that would actually be having it done to him multiple times over and over again, would check our nails and had a nail clipper with him to actually decide should someone clip their nails before doing it, because apparently people have hurt him in the past. Pressed his finger up against my delightful anus. Oh. And, some pressure. and then just went. <laughs> blah, blah, blah. It was in my butt. Oh my God. Oh my God. And then he said, okay, we're going. And then, boom. And it's nice and smooth. <laughs> Great. He just. You're essentially checking for masses. You're doing like a sweeping motion because the prostate is at the bottom portion. If you feel any irregularities, if you feel enlargements, those are all potential abnormalities. Everything feels fine, normal, smooth. So that was efficient, super quick, oh, oh. very painless. Whoa, that was way deeper than I expected. Lubed up, in and out. And you feel fine. All right. Okay. And here's some uh, tissue if you need it. I actually did uh, a simulated prostate exam on a robot in the UK on live television. Here you go. So we have to do something called a digital rectal exam. It's a finger up the bum, isn't it? It's a finger up the bum. 
what are we going to be doing today? Well, today we're going to be doing a little bit of electric stim on our gentleman right here. We're going to use it to simulate and mimic labor pain. Do you think we'll die? Once we can't handle any more pain, our safe word is epidural. Childbirth is so painful that you would gladly have a needle stuck between the two vertebrae in your back. It is a needle, and then usually a catheter is inserted over it in order to give a continuous line of medication. And the purpose is not for anesthesia, but for analgesia to basically allow the patient to not feel terrible pain, but to still keep some sensation of their contractions, keep some ability to contract and push. This will mimic a lot because it'll actually make the whole abdominal region contract. In real childbirth, it's your full torso. It's your stomach and it's your back. And your uterus, so you can put it inside you. You may not know this, but a great many women poop on the delivery table. Because the act of pushing is very much like having a bowel movement. That's very true, and that happens quite often. I think I've said it like so many times in my videos, and people still don't believe me. Ah! 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 Epidural! Epidural! Ironically, I feel like I've seen that happen in the hospital. <laughs> where patients said that they didn't want an epidural and then they changed their minds. My wife had an emergency C-section with our first child, so I'm behind a curtain with my wife, and the doctors are doing their thing behind the curtain. They said, wait until we give you the cue to stand up. I thought I heard the cue, so I stood up. And I'm gonna predict what he's gonna say. He's gonna say that the uterus is completely inverted and laying just on the belly, and he passes out. And I looked, and what I saw was my wife's abdomen, you know, cut open and clamped back, and on a table next to her, they'd taken out her intestines and her liver and all this stuff. They were in bowls on the That's how they do like C-section. What? <laughs> they did not remove his wife's liver. I promise they did not remove his wife's. Maybe it was the placenta or something, but. This is Travis. This is one of Ned's best friends. They went to high school together. So this is our high fidelity birth simulator. Her name's Fidelity? High fidelity. <laughs> so it's time. Let's do this. All right, yeah. honey, I need you to push for me. And Ten, as we're pushing. Nine, eight. All right, so this is going to be a lot of pain and pressure for the mother. You're doing great. Maybe. You're uh, doing great, Travis. Come we're gonna, on, exactly. push. Do, do it. it. Oh, you're doing so good. A lot of times it's nurses doing the coaching a lot better than the doctors, not going to lie. What do you mean <laughs> help him? There's nothing right, to so do. What do I pet it? Help. Spread the labia. So basically what you want to do is you want to control the baby's head so it comes out very slowly and gradually because the last thing you want is for it to come out real quick and then actually cause a tear in the vagina. So you want to control it and make sure it's coming out smoothly and help the baby rotate out so that there is no chance of the shoulder essentially getting caught and causing damage to the nerves uh, that supply the arm. Oh! Oh God, it's insane. The baby's head's coming out. Oh, it's like a there we go. And at that point, you want to visualize that the umbilical cord is not wrapping around the baby's neck because otherwise you want to remove it right away because it could actually choke the baby. She's like screaming now, right? Like how do I kind of just like defuse the situation like emotionally? Get the baby out. <laughs> Why are you tipping it away from the I'm table? Just, I want the table to catch the baby. In real life, you're gonna have to catch the baby. I have to catch a baby? Well, it doesn't shoot out. The last part does shoot out. Because remember, there's a lot of force. And then once like the major areas, like the shoulders and the hips are out, then the baby's kind of very slippery. So you want to be able to get a good grasp. Grabbing um, almost like by the back of the neck gives you a better uh, support on the top. And then the second hand is on the bottom. Gently push down and then gently pull up. So, so down. down. So when you push down, you actually drop the shoulder below and then you get the other shoulder up as well. Maybe so. Oh, there we go. Yeah. No, that was a little too hard. Sorry. Widest part of the baby is out. There you go. Look at that. Ooh. Whoa. You got it. See, look. Don't catch it. There you go. Oh, Perfect. Here we go. And right away, we do something called baby to breast, where we bring the baby. Once we make sure that the baby's APGAR scores are okay, we bring the baby to the mom, put it on mom's chest, allow the mom to spend some time with it, bond right away. We see better outcomes like that. Less stress for the baby as well. Aww. Also, during the process, you always want to keep an eye on the dad, that the dad just, or the partner is just like, boom. The Try Guys aren't the only ones who try. I tried out some of the most crazy and some good Kickstarter products. Click here to check that out. And as always, stay happy and healthy. There's one that made me gag. Click here to check it. Come on, watch it.